I fell head over heels in love with Discover a couple of months ago when we looked at it. A brilliant way of discovering music influence through the magic of a visual web, it had everything I love in an app. And now the creators have taken that same concept and applied it to apps. Available for both the iPad and the iPhone, Discover Apps allows you to enter an app name and see the apps similar to it. Tap one of those and it'll bring up its own web of similar apps. Now apps aren't quite as easy to see similarities and influences between as music. IMO doesn't bring up Skype and does bring up some apps unavailable in the UK and pretty soon you run out of similar apps. However, find one you like and you can double tap it for the description of the app, some screenshots and a link to the app store where you can download it. Although this process is slightly protracted thanks to the referral link. Back in the main screen, you can email a screenshot of the web or tweet or Facebook that very same JPEG. Overall, it's very good, but it doesn't quite hit the same, oh my god, that's amazing buttons as the music version. If you're constantly on the lookout for new apps though, it could be 59 pence well spent. I worry sometimes that people don't like apps quite as much as I like apps. For instance, please do let me know in the comments if the following review of Squirrel makes you want to scream and shout about how freaking brilliant technology is, because it does me. Squirrel is a bit like Instapaper for videos, but it's so much more. It's a place to find the latest TED Talks, collect your favourite YouTube videos, and if you're a lucky American, even view your Netflix movies. In fact, there's so much there, it's tricky to know where to start. The first tab is My Videos, where you'll find a queue of videos you've bookmarked on your desktop or emailed to the service using your own personal Squirrel It email address. Galleries are somewhere you can subscribe to whole playlists of videos from everyone from Funny or Die to other Squirrel users. You'll find these in the Discover tab and you can drill down from collections to individual videos. Community is where you can see what other people are viewing and the browser is where you can access the world. There's big buttons for most big video players, or you can use the search bar to specify the keywords and the video source. At any point, you can squirrel a video by hitting the little acorn at the top, and please note the little running squirrel, which indicates stuff is happening. Finally, if you're an Apple TV person, the app works with AirPlay, so you can get all of this on your TV. Please tell me all this, combined with the fact that it's a totally free app, completely and utterly blows your mind. Eight Tracks is a website where you can create mixes of eight tracks or more and share them legally with the wider internet world. The new iPhone app lets you dip into these compilations on the go. You can browse through featured or hot mixes or dig down by genre. Once you find your favourites, hit the like button and it'll be saved forevermore. You can like individual tracks too and even buy them for keeps straight from iTunes. Tracks are streamed so it won't work when you haven't got an internet connection and you can only skip so many tracks per hour in order to comply with 8-tracks license. These limitations aside, it's a great way to find new music and totally free to boot. Walk, jog, run. All excellent things to do with your legs. Also, a website much loved by runners where you can plot and share your favourite routes. Now, there's an iPhone app to go with it. Open the app and it will locate you and show you routes people have added to the site that are near your location. You can then break them down by distance and then view them on a map or as a list. Each route has details including the time it'll take you to run and the calories you'll burn based on your own data. Routes you've previously logged can be found in My Routes, but you will have to enter these on the site itself rather than the app. Despite this, the training tab makes the fairly steep £2.99 cost worthwhile. Go in there and find a training plan for, say, a half marathon, and then click on the day you're going to complete. Not only will it detail what you've got to run and the level of intensity you should be running at, but it will find routes near you suitable for that run. There's only one real problem with this app, and that's the fact that you've either got to memorise the routes or keep checking back to the app. But apart from that, it's my new favourite running app. Lots of Android owners feel slightly put out by the fact that developers tend to err on the side of iOS when developing cool new stuff. So those people should be mega fans of the people behind Lightbox, which could be just the Android camera app you've been looking for. Like many camera apps out there, it allows you to take photos, improve them through various filters, and then share them on Facebook, Foursquare, Tumblr, and Twitter. 
You can also add locations to the photos, and this is all mega easy, and if you're not online, it'll queue them for uploading later. With Lightbox, the photo sharing works both ways, as it'll also download your Facebook and Twitter friends' recent photos for you to view, even when offline. You can retweet and comment on them from inside the app. Popular photos are those shared across the Lightbox network, whilst news photos are taken from sources such as The Guardian and New York Times. Another cool feature is the fact that it will sync the photos you save with other Android devices, so you'll be able to access everything you've got on your phone on, say, your tablet. One of the really notable things is the slickness of this app. Dare I say it, it's a little more iOS than your average Android app. Want more? Go to www.fraculus.com forward slash follow for a glut of RSSE, iTunesy, podcasty, subscription-y options. <coughs>